Okay, so I've got the carrier right here. I'm gonna take the ring gear off. Apparently this thing smells really, really bad. I'm trying to get some work done and these people are dropping in on me. These are my old clutch packs and it's very important that you do this. I mean, these things are, make sure that you get them firmly in the trash. Welcome to Gearhead 704, I'm Matt, and today is just a beautiful, gorgeous day, and what a better day to be working inside on your car. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Uh, actually, you can see Tar Heel Fox is behind me, and uh, I'm here at Fox Mustang Restoration, and that means that we're working on the SSP today. I'm continuing a series of videos here on actually uh, rebuilding the rear end for the SSP. Once the rear end is rebuilt, then I can go ahead and get it back in the car and actually get the SSP over here to FMR and when I do that, uh, we're gonna have a lot of projects. We're gonna do interior, we're gonna do paint, we're gonna do all kinds of stuff on this SSP. But uh, yeah, for those of you that are new to the channel, Fox Mustang Restoration is, uh, like I said, that's where I'm at today. And they make all kinds of, of parts for the Fox bodies. They're Fox bodies only, anything 79 to 93. They've got it. They also have a lot of new old stock as well. Basically, those are parts that Ford originally created that you could buy from like a dealership or something that are no longer made, but they still got them. They're brand new OEM Ford parts, not sold by Ford. So they got a lot of those. So anyway, if you haven't checked them out already, definitely do that. I have a link in the description down below, like I always do. And uh, you actually get 10% off with a uh, promo code down there. So definitely check it out. But other than that, uh, you'll see Matt from Fox Mustang Restoration here on the channel some today. He is helping me out with the rear end rebuild. And uh, if you haven't caught up on the build so far, I will link those videos as well in the description below. But anyway, let's go ahead and get inside and get going on this thing because if I can finish quickly, I might be able to still enjoy some of this beautiful Saturday. Okay, so I've got the carrier right here. Um, I've got to basically got to get these bearings off. The first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to take the ring gear off. Now this is just 19 millimeters here, and uh, got, I can use a you know socket wrench, uh, air wrench on this. So I'll take those off and then I should be able to knock this ring gear off. Now this is a 373, but we're going with a 355 because this one actually does have some problems on it. I want to reuse. So I'm not going to be able to use this, uh, this ring gear here. So let me get started with that, getting the ring gear off. Actually, before I get started with the ring gear teardown, um, these are my clutch packs. Okay. So you've got a fiber and a steel and you've also got these shims and those are all going to stack together. They're actually behind the uh, this behind the gear in here, but anyway, these are all new. But I need to actually uh, take the fibers and soak them in this friction modifier, and uh, so they do send this with the kit, which is very cool. So I'm going to take the friction modifier and pour that in, and then soak these fibers. And uh, apparently, this thing smells really, really bad. So luckily, you, on, you know, on YouTube, you can't get smells through. That's probably a good thing for you guys. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay guys, so I'm actually outside and uh, I missed the money shot, sorry. But basically you can see the ring gear is off now. Um, what I was doing, just so you know, I was having a little bit of trouble when I was just using the, let me get out of the light here. When I was just using the hammer to hit this, I was sometimes moving over a little bit and hitting part of the carrier here, which I really didn't want to do. Um, so I got it a little ways with just the hammer on the outside, but then I used this uh, punch here to go through these holes and knock the ring gear down, which is really, if you're gonna reuse the ring gear, you should do it this way. But yeah, once I got it on concrete, I mean, it came it came right off. So I got the ring gear off. Uh, gotta get this S spring out now. That's the next step so I can get the spider gears out. So I'm just gonna try to hammer it. I might also have to use a punch. We'll see, but I'm gonna start with a hammer there. All right, so I knocked the S-spring out, as you can tell, and I'm actually taking the spider gears out now. And I just, um, while I'm taking these out, I want you guys to know, you should remember if you're gonna reuse these spider gears, which I don't know if we're gonna reuse mine or not, but which side they came out on these big ones here. So 
I want to make sure that this one, if we reuse it, is the ring gear side because I'll save, you know, like a hundred bucks. So yeah, it's important to remember. Okay, so the spider gears are out as you saw, and good news, I can reuse them. Uh, whoever replaced the, put the 373 in recently, they replaced the spider gears and they look good, so we can reuse that. Uh, the next thing I need to do for disassembly of this carrier though, is I need to actually get these uh, bearings off. I got one on the top, one down here, see that? So there's actually a, a special bearing puller tool for this. So it's pretty cool. Um, I'm basically gonna put this here. It'll put downward pressure to help pull the bearing out. Along with this guy, this guy is going to sit on top, and as uh, you create more tension there, it's going to begin to pull the bearing up. So, show you guys that real quick. Trying to get some work done and these people are dropping in on me. This guy's supposed to be at college. What are you doing here? He's supposed to be in school. Yeah. It's Saturday, you know. But anyway. There's a football game in uh, an hour, so. And we're playing each other today. <laughs> yeah, you are. We're playing each other, so you guys can't hear me. I want to take this. They brought uh so I had a video before where this car was in the garage and it's out today. It's the first time I'm getting to see it. I forgot it was an auto. Yeah. But it's convertible. Now I need to take my top down. You guys are making me look bad. <laughs> I know it is hot. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Especially with 65 when I left this morning. Well, that's, yeah. I mean, it could be worse, right? It's only 80s at least today, uh, so. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, but uh, I know it's hot. I mean, look at me, man. <laughs> I'm a mess, I'm a mess, guys. But yeah, I'm tearing the rear end down. So uh, I'm gonna hang out with Ben a little bit, but just mix up the video for you guys a little bit because I know you're tired of seeing me tear apart rear end parts. I'm tired of it, so. Blow masters on it or not? Just stock. Sounds good. Yeah, sounds good. Gotta get an Instagram shot. We'll see how Ben does, I don't know. Can you get a good shot, Ben? Are you a good picture taker? We're gonna find out today on Gearhead 704. I break, <laughs> I break cameras, thank you very much. Yeah, me too, buddy. I'm ugly. Me too. It happens. It's got a small camera, so we don't have exactly what the cam is. Oh, you got a GC40 intake, okay. Mm -hmm. The Explorer intake version, yeah. I like that. Uh, had it about a year, and of course, at this point, still trying to figure it out. Yeah, but. You drove it here, you didn't break down. You, you don't have a, a Capri that breaks down. <laughs> let's see, let's watch the master work here. You know, Harris is gonna give you a hard time if you screw it up. No, wait, actually Matt will. Harris is a lot better than I am. Just a little bit, right? I don't have the, I don't have my mom's camera. Keeps moving further the right. <laughs> they brought the car show to me, guys. I was working on my car, I couldn't make it to the show today. So you brought the car show to me, I appreciate that. All right, guys, Ben just left. Uh, check him out on Instagram if you're not, because he does have an awesome Capri, even though it's always broke down. But uh, I'll have his information, and I'll just put it right up here on the screen. Uh, definitely check him out if you're not already. But right now, what I need to do is I need to go ahead and clean the carrier. So that's why I've got this mask here. And I'm going to go ahead and do that with some Breck cleaner, because I don't really want to breathe that stuff in. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, it's time to press the bearings onto the carrier. You can see here I've got this uh, kind of like hydraulic press and I've got my uh, carrier set up here. I'm gonna need to put some lube in here, lube around here. I'm gonna press this down and then once it goes down to a certain point, I'm actually gonna take the old bearing to finish it off to get it past this chamfer here. So, I'm gonna show you guys that. Not in real time. <laughs> Jen and Matt just said I could have a beer, guys. 
where else do you get to do that at a workplace? It's because I'm not an employee here, so. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm not gonna do that because it could get a little crazy here on Gearhead 704, so we're not gonna do that right now. But I did go ahead and get these bearings pressed on. Look, they're spinning around. And this hydraulic jack is awesome for that. So bearings are on. Next step is actually get it mocked up in the housing and uh, we're gonna check the run out. So let me go ahead and do that. So guys, we're testing the run out. Gonna take the new races, put them on the carrier and then put the carrier over there in the rear end. Then we'll get some shims on there and we'll basically um, get a little bit of preload on it so we can find out what run out we need. All right, so what we got going here is I put the carrier in and then I was looking for shims that would fit in there so we can test this run out. By the way, earlier when I was mentioning the run out, we wanna basically make sure it's not too far out of spec. I think you can, you're allowed like 30 thousandths or something like that and we don't wanna be past that. Uh, so that's what I meant by the run out. But yeah, I've got the uh, shims in here and there's a little bit of preload on it now. So we're gonna be able to measure this, but I gotta get the caps on. Gotta put the caps on and they are, they're over here. I left them in liquid last time, uh, but you don't really wanna, and we did label them, right? You see that? See why it's got R there? I don't know if that shows up, but you wanna definitely get them on the correct side. You don't wanna mess that up. So just keep that in mind. All right, as you can see, this is bolted down now with the proper sides and we'll be able to go ahead and see what our run out is. The last guy that did this, there was some Loctite on the ring gear. He used a lot of it and it's stuck on this carrier right here. Okay. You feel that lip? Yeah. So before we put the ring gear on, we need to clean all that stuff off. But the most important part is, is we need to make sure where the dial indicator comes in contact that it's not, it doesn't come in contact with any of that stuff because that's going to give us a false reading. Uh, okay. All right. Hey. I got the Fox Doctor here with me, folks, in case you don't know Matt. So. <laughs> got it zeroed out now, guys, and we're gonna spin it yep. slowly. Yep, so go ahead and just spin it slowly and watch that needle. It could go on either side of the needle. Oh, I'm sorry, of the zero? Of the zero. Yeah. Oh, I just moved the housing, is it's that fine. fine? No, it's fine. That's why we have this clamp to the housing. Okay. So just keep spinning it. I got too much shatter. Maybe you guys will see that better. Oh, so now we're at we want to we want to spin it a full 360 degrees okay. and find the lowest spot. Oop. Okay, hold on. So you see how you fell into that notch right there? Yeah. That's fine. We're just going to pick the probe up and move it right there. Okay. See, we're back at zero. Going too fast? No. No, you're fine. See, it goes down to it looks like what's that one? One. Which is so, one thousandth, right? Yep. We don't want it to go, go back past to three. zero. Now, normally, if it would go ahead and go back on the other side of zero, mm -hmm. we would find the furthest to the right that it goes or, and then center it back out and then read the indicator in one direction. Okay. It just happens. We're almost all the way back around now. Right. And it just happens to be that we found like perfect zero, like right there. Oh, we got lucky go. for once. And then I just knocked it, but. I never saw it go more than one right. though. So your, so your threshold is three thousandths of an inch and you are showing. 1,000 uh, right there. Barely a thousandths and a half. Okay. So yeah, your ring gear was, yeah, I'm sorry, your carrier is within spec. It is not warped. And awesome. we're ready to take it apart, bolt your ring gear to it, put your clutch pack in and set the backlash. Sweet. Good to know that I don't have to replace it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so all we were doing there was just validating that my carrier was good. Like you heard Matt say, I could go as much up to three thousandths but uh, only went uh, up to one thousandths. So what we do right now is go ahead and uh, take these off again. Remember which side they go on, although we've labeled them right here. Then I'm gonna take this out and I'll put the ring gear on and build it on the bench and then we'll be able to slap it back into the rear end one step closer. Okay, so the next thing we gotta do is we've gotta get the uh, clutch packs all set up here. So the fibers have been in this lovely smelling stuff for quite a while now. Okay, and we got our steel. So this is actually gonna go on these uh, spider gears. That's how we're gonna set these up, right? Um, you're gonna go with fiber first, which is nice and messy. And then we got two steels, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. okay. The teeth will only go a certain way, maybe? Yeah. Well. Just as long as they ain't locked, they don't have a specific orientation. Oh, there we go. Okay. And this is basically what's going to give us our traction lock. So 
We got two stills in there, and then we get another fiber. I don't think these uh, fibers are, it doesn't matter which way they go as far as if you go that or that, right? Correct. Right. Uh, okay. All right. Two stills again. Yep. Smells lovely over here. Any last yeah. fiber. All right. Okay. And then the rest, I've got, uh, it's interesting, that one doesn't actually, I guess because we're already at the top here, at the teeth. Right, well, if you look at that fiber, mm -hmm. the uh, the fiber have no interlock teeth for that spider gear. It's only the steels. That only there. the steels lock, That's okay. That's why you are able to free spin the rear end uh, because the, the fibers will be able to slip a little bit on the uh, on the steels. Okay. And the steels themselves lock it. So the rest of it will be for the other spider gear. But uh, we're going to have our shim, and that's what we're going to try to measure for now, right? Correct. And what yeah. we're going to do, we don't have the right tool for that, so what we're going to do is we're going to take all that back off that spider gear, compress it with a C-clamp, measure it, take that measurement, deduct it from 640 thousandths of an inch, and then the difference is going to be what our shim what thickness is. What our shim needs. should be. Okay. All right, guys, so we're just going to go ahead and do that, get it in the C-clamp and measure that, and uh, it'll just be in a time lapse, but we'll tell you how it comes out. Did measure these in the C-clamp. The measurement came out to uh, 600, and basically that means we need a uh, .04 shim, a 40 shim. So we really need to be at about 640 to 645 according to specs. So that's why we went with the 40 uh, shim. And now I've got to do the other side. Remember, this is just one clutch pack. You've got them on both sides. I got to do the other one the same way. So we'll see what size shim I need for that side. All right, guys, measurement on that one was 615. So like I said, we can go all the way to 645, right? 640, 645. So I've got a 30 shim here. 30 plus uh, 15 is 45. I can do math. Look at that. <laughs> so yeah, that's the shim size we need there. So I'm going to go ahead and load that up on this one. All right, guys, so these are my old clutch packs, and it's very important that you do this. I mean, these things are make sure that you get them firmly in the trash if you're not reusing them, which why would you? I mean, uh, the kit comes with them. So yeah, use new ones, throw those old ones away. <laughs> All right, so now the spider gears are ready to go into the carrier. Um, you can see for the fibers, they've got little notches down in here. I think you can see that. Uh, yeah, there's a notch right there. That's where these fibers go into. So I'm gonna do the bottom one first. Uh, the one towards the carrier side, not the carrier side, sorry. The one towards the ring gear side here, I know that that's the spider gear there. I basically uh, was keeping up with that. So anyway, I'm gonna time lapse this again. Okay, y'all, the spider gear is in and I tested it with the pin to make sure it was lined up correctly. So, uh, now that that is in there, I need to get this uh, S-clip, which is right right here, hammered back through. Uh, the pin was just to make sure things were lined up. So get the pin out and get the S-clip in there. That's the next step. Okay, guys, I actually got that in myself, which I was really surprised about, um, you know, just like without a whole lot of help. So this is the S spring and I just hammered it down in there and I wanted to make sure that it actually went in correctly, which it does because the pen went through there, you know, the pen. So yeah, there's the S spring. Uh, pretty easy to knock in there, especially if you have vice grips. So I had vice grips to kind of bend it and hold it a little bit down there. But yeah, I uh, just do that and the hammer. So next steps. Uh, next thing I got to do is I got to get the ring gear on there. So I'm going to go ahead and work on lining that up and make sure all the bolts are, are ready to go. So that's the next thing I'm gonna put on. And then the carrier is basically done and ready to go in the rear end, I believe. Okay guys, so uh, I've got the uh, ring gear here. I've set it on some wood and also I've got um, obviously the carrier. I've already set the carrier down. You can kind of, hold on, there you go. You can kind of see that, the sun's coming in. Okay, and I need to go ahead and bolt this down. Um, I did have to use this punch here just to make sure that things were lined up. But I'm lined up now and there's a mosquito. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and bolt that down. All 
My chair rolled away. Sun is going down, but I'm still here working for you guys. So I got these all hand tight um, and a little bit more, a little bit more snug, but now it's time to put the torque on it. So we're gonna go 77 foot pounds. Got my torque wrench right here and uh, yeah, we'll get started on that. All right guys, the ring gear is bolted on as I crack this uh, cardboard and it scares myself, but it's just the cardboard cracking. Let me turn it over here. Hard with the camera in one hand. But yeah, the ring gear is bolted on. I was actually marking the spots where I torqued them down. So the chunk, the differential is ready to go in. But there is gonna be another part to this video. I think this is like part three maybe. So there's gonna be a part four. Uh, yeah, this is just real time guys. It's what it really takes. Uh, you know, I'm not overhauling here. Unfortunately, I'm not building a car in a day and it is what it is, but I hope you guys are enjoying it. I hope you're learning something from it. And if nothing else, I'm having a blast. I mean, seeing that spider gear go in and just figuring that out and knocking that S-spring in, that was so cool. So uh, again, big shout out to uh, Matt here at Fox Mustang Restoration for helping me out and kind of guide me what to do. Again, if you guys haven't checked them out before and you need some Fox body parts, all that information is down in the description below. So check it out if you want to. But anyway, if you did enjoy this video, please hit the like button, that helps a ton. It really does. When more likes I get, the more YouTube promotes my content. And if you're stopping in for the first time or you haven't subscribed yet, that would be nice as well. And we will see you next time on Gearhead 704.